online fundraising. Um, so some of you might be on the pro on the previous programs where we looked at um, uh, fundraising and grant applications and doing grant applications online. What I'm going to be focused on, <coughs> excuse me, this evening is um, looking at the whole area of, of moving your fundraising activity to an online platform, whether it be through your website or through um, social media channels. Um, so it's going to share the screen to here first. Of, um, Okay, can you all see that? Yep. Okay, so um, just for those of you who didn't, who haven't been on the program, uh, but presumably most of you've been on previous workshops at this stage, but just in case you haven't been, uh, my name is Tom O'Leary uh, from O'Leary and Associates Training and Consultancy uh, Limited, and um, I work primarily with the not-for-profit sector community voluntary organizations on uh, developing feasibility studies, uh, doing grant applications, uh, business planning, strategic planning, um, and mentoring and training. And a big part of what I do is is, is work with groups on, on looking at their 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 financial situation in terms of what money they need to to bring in to cover ongoing overheads and to look at um, look at funding they need for developing projects, uh, capital projects, and things like that. Um, in the last two years or more now since COVID, um, the kind of traditional fundraising that people were doing, going out collecting, you know backpacking, doing kind of fundraisers, doing events that all stopped because of social distancing and we couldn't meet each other and we couldn't go out and do any kind of physical fundraising. So um, a lot of the traditional fundraising that was being done by clubs and by groups came to standstill. Um, so kind of forced groups into looking at, um, well, if we can't get money in or traditional ways of doing it, how do we, how do we bring in the money now? Um, some groups kind of, kind of, I suppose, embraced it and thought, okay, there's this opportunity for us to look at being innovative and getting in new ways of getting funding in. Others kind of basically just, you know, pulled on the barriers and said, okay, we'll wait this wait till all this is over and we'll, we'll go back to what we did before, but we can go back to what we did before. So what we were saying for a long time is a lot of groups should have been online, um, you know, kind of embracing the whole digital kind of side of things, um, primarily from a fundraising point of view, because... Um, it gives them way more access to 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 um, way more people if they're fundraising online as opposed to doing a local fundraiser in their local village, community hall, town, or, or parish, wherever it might be. So, yeah, as we've been saying for a long time, but again, as people weren't really they weren't taking it up because they were constantly doing the same things over and over again in terms of their existing fundraising activity, and it was working fine for them. Um, but with COVID, obviously, like everything else, it kind of it created a shock that we had to adjust and adjust the way we're operating across every business and a lot of business now or a lot of groups now are looking at moving online or have moved online with the fundraising or part of it and i'm hoping that the groups that have gone online um and are looking at fundraising online will continue to do so um after COVID's all over because it is it is it is a very good way of getting additional funds into the organization so the agenda for tonight then is looking at um I suppose, first of all, using third party sites. So a lot of people, if they're doing an online fundraiser, they'll go to like GoFundMe. Um, and we're all kind of familiar with that in terms of donating money to different kind of charities and different events over the last two or two years or more. Um, I look at, talked about developing your own website for your organization and setting up uh, donation pages on the website. Um, now I won't go into the technical detail of this in terms of how to build a website and all that. And this is more an overview in terms of what's available to you in terms of bringing your, on, bringing your fundraising online. Um, using social media platforms to fundraise uh, through, through Facebook primarily. People are now using Facebook to sub so fundraising pages on the Facebook accounts. Um, looking at innovative ways of online fundraising campaigns. So looking at very successful international campaigns that you should be familiar with. Um, and, you know, the, 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 the kind of the, the uniqueness really of, of doing something different and doing something that's going to grab attention and get traction um, online. Um, we've all heard of kind of viral campaigns. Um, a viral fundraising campaign will generate you a lot of money. Um, using video and promotional tools, and this is a big part of why it's important to go online, is because you can you can direct people to a lot more a lot more information about your project or about your what you're trying to do or your 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 um, capital project or if you're investing in say facilities, you can provide a lot more information on your website, on your social media about what the project is about. You can use type things like testimonials video presentations you know designs um drawings sketches that kind of stuff um and just gives people an idea in terms of what they're actually giving money towards whereas you ask someone if you're backpacking in in, in done stores or in tesco and you're standing at the end of the, the checkout um people don't really know 
what you're actually fundraising for. You see a bucket and they see maybe someone with a jersey on or a t-shirt on with a name on it, but they don't really know unless they ask. They might ask, what are you fundraising for? Um, but they don't know unless they ask. Whereas if you're online, you can direct them to all the information about what you're trying to do, and then they can make their own mind about why they should get involved or not get involved. Um, but again, marketing campaigns. So there's no point in having a fundraiser if no one knows about it. Um, so it's really how you do that through social media and also through traditional marketing. So even though your, your fundraiser might be online, you'd be using your traditional marketing techniques like your print materials, your, your flyers, your billboards, um, your newspaper um, articles, your, your radio interviews with presenters, um, as well as, as your social media channels. Um, we're talking about using influencers, so people that are well known, um, whether it be sports people, entertainers, musicians, uh, business people, tend to kind of keep away from politicians because it can it can be it can be uh, divisive in terms of um, in people following different parties. So, um, but definitely would say like sports people, um, and the reason why you use them is because a lot of those, those you know sports people and musicians and, and actors or whatever might have or not might have will have a lot of followers. So you're hoping that if they're back in this project, that their their followers on their social media pages will hear about it. And if you want, if you get even a tiny percentage of those to sign up, um, you're going to start generating a little bit of revenue. Um, the big thing with going online is that you're not confined to your your geographic area, so you're not confined to your parish or your community or your village or your town um, or your county. You're, you've got a whole diaspora network that you can tap into worldwide, um, and that's something that. You know, we, we've we've got first-hand experience of in terms of in terms of um, in Kerry here, where the GEA went out and they 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 managed to secure a lot of funding in the states for their their their, their center of excellence, and I was tapping into the people that left Ireland many years ago who wanted to get something back, who still are, you know very strong links and ties to the community here, um, without them traveling over there. Um, they wouldn't have done that, but if again you can target these people now, you know, with a with a with a WhatsApp message, with a Facebook post, with a with an Instagram post, with a Twitter post, you know, it's it's making the world very very small, but it's it's giving you access to an awful lot more people than you would if you're doing a local fundraiser. So that's what we're going to cover this evening. Um, feel free to ask any questions as you go as I go along. So you can just raise your hand, or you can put a question in chat, and um, I'll, I'll cover them later on if that's okay. So. Um, Right, so I suppose online fundraising is not a new thing. It's been there for a long time, um, you know, very long time, really. But as I said, people weren't really take much notice of it or they weren't really interested in getting involved in it because um, they were doing their own things all along. It really came to front then where when everything went online with COVID, um, we started getting a lot of phone calls saying, how do we do a fundraiser online? Do we go to third party sites? Do we, do we, do we hire someone to do it first? What can we do? So that's why you know we were talking to Caroline earlier uh, when we were putting this uh, this program together back before Christmas. Um, it was a key thing that we wanted to, to include in, in the actual program because um, it's very very important that, that that groups like yourselves understand this in terms of why you should be doing it. Um, but it's also very important that you actually do it as well because it is it is a it is a very good way of getting your money in. Um, it does provide you with a new revenue stream. So you might be doing your traditional fundraisers every year. Your physical fundraiser, you might be, you might have a lotto going, 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 going on every week. Like most clubs would have lottos. Uh, you might have grants coming in from different sources. You know, core funding from maybe you know different grant sources or, or one-off grants. Um, and this, this is just another revenue stream that you can start bringing in. That is kind of like, it's like passive income. So you hear about people making money passively. So they do a training program, they put it up on YouTube and people pay for it, or they, they do a podcast and people pay for that, or they, they write a book and people are downloading it and they're, they're getting paid while they sleep. With, with, your, with your online fundraising, um, it is passive income because once your fundraiser is up online, it's live, um, people can actually donate any time of the night, any time of the day. So you're not out there physically actually collecting the money, it's coming through your, your, your platform. So it is, it is bringing in an additional revenue stream um, um, and it, it will bring in some level of revenue. It might bring in everything you need, but it will bring in some level of revenue if you're doing it properly or if you're doing it at all. Um, as I said, you've got a wider audience. This, this is why it's so important because you're now going from your local area to a wider area. The diaspora, as I said, is, is hugely important. If you take everyone you know, we all know someone that's like has moved to either necessity or because they want to move to Australia or to the States or to the UK or somewhere in Europe or Canada or wherever it might be. Um, we all know someone that's, that's, that's abroad. There's a lot of networks already built up in, 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 in those locations as well. So you've got a very strong GA network and Irish community in, in the States and the UK and, and elsewhere. 
um, and you try to tap into those or establish networks. But the key thing really is that when, when most people go away, um, they, they tend to want to give something back to the community. So they can become more kind of passionate about their, their, their place they're from when they're actually gone from the place they're from than when they're here. And it's what tapping into that really. And that's what the GA did when, when they went over and fundraised in the UK and, and, and New York and other parts of the States there um, probably four, four years ago now. Um, they tapped into that, that, that heartbeat of the, the, your, your passionate GA supporter living over in America and, and many of them living there for like 40 to 50 years. And that's what they tapped into. Um, you can do very creative campaigns um, because, again, it, you know, it, the great about going online with social media, it does not be, you know, it does not be that costly. Uh, you don't need to be kind of a movie director to kind of put together a decent kind of video presentation. The more kind of amateurish it looks in some cases it is better again because it's more more genuine and more more kind of authentic. Um, but again, you can be very very creative, and you don't have to come up with these campaigns yourselves. Um, you can just look at all the campaigns that have been done by other clubs, organizations, groups, not just in Ireland, but worldwide. And you can take in the best of all of them and then kind of create your own campaign or just copy a campaign they do. Um, the great thing about online as well is that it's more transparent and it's, it's way easier to administer. So if you take, say, a, a typical, uh, say, church gate collection or um, a table quiz collection or backpacking collection, Someone's got to take the, the physical money, the coins, the, the notes, whatever, bring it somewhere, count it. So there's a security issue there from one point in, in terms of, the, you know, that's they've got this money on, on, on them and they're, they're, they're at risk of, of, of being robbed. Um, and that's happening quite a bit in different areas. Um, you also got a situation then, though, where people are saying, geez, you know, they went off there to the back of the pub with all that money. <laughs> who was monitoring them, keeping in mind who was counting with them, who was looking over their shoulder, you know? Um, and a lot of people don't want to be involved in, in, the, in the, the collection of money because if anything, if anything goes missing or if it gets misplaced, whatever that, there's all these rumors that can be spread. So the great thing about online is that you're not touching any money. It's, been, it's going into your PayPal account or your Stripe account or going directly into your bank account if it's done through direct debit or standing order, or if it's done by electronic transfer to your account. So there's no one actually physically counting money. So when you say, if you're doing an online account and it's going in through PayPal, the, the donations, your PayPal statement um, would have the list of all the money's received, um, rather than to count that money, okay? Um, so you can, you can and, and, and most of those, or all of those payment portals have um, reporting functions as well. So you can actually print out reports um, in terms of income reports, uh, revenue reports, things like that as well. So it is a lot easier to minister. Um, it's more transparent. What I mean by transparent is that there's no one really accountable for handling the money or, or making sure that money doesn't get misplaced or does counted properly or there's no issues with it. So because no one's handling money, it's all it's all it's all cashless, it's all um contactless as such. Um, it's more cost effective. It's more cost effective because again, you're once you put up your your platform, your fundraiser online where people can donate. And um, that's pretty much it done then in terms of the actual, you know, going out there and, uh, you know, printing tickets, printing, you know, going out collecting tickets or selling tickets. Um, it is way more cost effective, you know, than, 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 a, than a typical um, fundraiser. A lot of groups now are doing, say, uh, campaign, you know, before COVID, we're doing things like, you know, who wants to be a millionaire, who wants uh, strictly come dancing, the cube, uh, race nights, all this sort of stuff, right? They're, they're costly because they're events you've got to put on and pay for. Whereas you do uh, if an online fundraiser, okay, you might do something with it in terms of raffle or something like that, but there's no, there's no cost of running the event because it's a virtual event, it's a virtual platform you're doing it on. There's less volunteer hours. Again, because you take, say, um, someone backpacking or collecting outside a church or, or whatever, they have to physically stand there for, you know, and rotate maybe for 10 hours on a Saturday, for example, right? Um, or walk around door to door collecting money or selling tickets for, you know, the race night or the lot or whatever it might be. Very, very time consuming. And there's a lot of volunteers out there collecting money every week um, in all sorts of kinds of weather. And I get abuse in a lot of cases as well from people because they're asking for money. Um, so it's not the nicest job in the world. With online, that's taken out of it because, again, the once the platform is up there, it's up there. Now you got to push it, and you got to let people know it's there, and you know you got to go to the site, you go to the, the Facebook page, or go to the third party um, fundraising platform to actually donate money. But you're not, you know, going around in the depths of winter, night like tonight, um, in the cold and the rain and the rain and the wet, selling tickets for something, you know. So it is, it is more cost effective. There is less volunteer hours involved in it. Okay, um, so it's, it's way more efficient uh, a way of, of generating money. Um, 
so the the the, the thing I would, I suppose we concentrate on first would be. And you know, some people would use third, third party fundraising platforms like GoFundMe because it's easy to do, it's straightforward, you don't have to worry about it, it's done for them. Um, not having your own website, you're kind of missing a trick really as such. And it's not just one point of your fundraising. Um, with with say, you know, stuff we covered already in previous programs about governance and the regulator and the, the, the governance code and reporting back to the regulator and communicating to your stakeholders and all that. Um, like we all kind of like do, we're used to seeing annual reports being done. But if you have a website, you can put up on your website your annual report, your your accounts, your your summary of your income and expenditure. You know, you can put up testimonials, you can put up you know uh, clippings of 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 uh, press releases, or open days launches. You know, um, what you want to put up there. So anyone that's that's looking to get involved with your organization, whether it be a volunteer, whether it be a client or a service user, whether it be a stakeholder like say um, a funder um, or a sponsor. They can go onto your website and they can get they can go through you know your site and see kind of what you're doing and how you're doing it and how good you are you know um so it's very it's a good idea to have a website um and get one done up if you've got your own website you can have your donation page on the site which means that you now control the the the, the, the actual donation page donation page on your own site the good thing about that is, is there's there's no commission being paid to a third party platform. Now you would be paying commission on, let's say, if you're using PayPal or Stripe, there is a commission on transactions. But with the other third parties, there's a commission on their administration fee as such is taken off uh, the top. So you're you're reducing your 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 income from the the fundraiser slightly. Um, the, the good thing about the, your own website is you've got full control of content. So you can you know if you want say go fund me page. Yeah, you can give information about the fundraiser you're doing, but you can't really give much more information. You've got to direct them back to your site anyway. So at least if they're on your site, you can give them all the information they want about you know what you're doing, you know why you're doing it, um, and they can get as much information as they want to, or they can they might bother looking at any information. Um, there's more opportunities for marketing as well. So again, let's say for example, if you're going out looking for sponsors. Um, and you've got, a, you've got a website that's very active and a lot of people go on there and you've got a lot of, you know, um, visits to your site every week for whatever reason. Um, now you've got, say, you know, a space there for a company to put their logos on, you know, so we can say, look, we've got X amount of visitors per week. Um, if you sponsor us, we'll give you your logos on the side of the pitch. We'll give you our logos on our Facebook or our social media platforms. Uh, but we'll also have, you know, give you a logo on the homepage of our site or the most, the most visited part of our site. Um, uh, you can again. You can provide more information to potential donors. Um, so, like your your video, um, you know, information on your policies and procedures. So, a lot of say, for example, schools would have fairly detailed websites now, um, and it's for say parents' information. So, it might be you know details of curriculum, kind of the the policies and procedures, the um, you know kind of the the, the guidelines and rules and regulations. Um, and they can put up also information on the site then about stuff that's happening as well. Um, you can promote the work you're doing. So again, you can you can let people know what you're doing um, on a regular basis, so they're they're they can see you're doing something as a group as an organization. Uh, it allows you to build up a database of contacts. So if you want a lot of sites, you got a pop up. So you might have let's say click here to you know sign up to a newsletter. They get their email address um, as pretty much all you would need their name and their email address. Um, you've now got their email address and you know you've you've asked them on that that sign up uh to tick the box if they don't want to be if they don't want to receive any 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 marketing materials or any any uh email marketing from you. If they don't tick that box, then you know they they can get that that information from you. So now you can send them a newsletter, you can send them information, you can send them whatever you need to send them. But now you've got a database of actual contacts. Um it becomes a notice board. So again. Um, we do a lot of work with kind of community councils that are kind of responsible for, I suppose, what's happening within a village or within a town, uh, within villages mostly. And it, you know, baffles me where a lot of them don't have a, a website where there's a notice board there on the site where you know it's got information about what's coming up this week in the in the village in terms of maybe you know a football match or a fundraising event or whatever it might be. So it's just a platform where people can actually go and and, and see what's happening. Or if say if it's a place where you might get a, you know visitors or tourists, 
again, you could have a notice board there for, for the different visitors as well in terms of what's happening in the in things to do and see in, in the in the in the parish or whatever, you know. So it's again it's a very simple way of, of putting up information about what's happening uh, within the community. It's communication tool with your clients and stakeholders. So again, I said that you know you're using this as communication tool, they'll come back to your site for information, um, or you're putting information up on your site about um your 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 organization, so your, your policy procedures, your your annual reports, etc. The disadvantage, I suppose, of a website and having your own website is a setup cost because you can do DIY websites unless you're good at them, um, unless you're kind of okay around design and how websites should look and, and navigate and operate. Um, you know, if you can and you are good at that, then yeah, by all means, go and do a DIY, DIY site. Um, but you really want to something professional, um, particularly if you're fundraising online, because if you've got a, an online payment portal on your website and your website looks you know very amateurish or it's like just kind of trumped together by someone that's just kind of learning what they're doing um i for one wouldn't give my credit card details to a site like that plus you know you often see it on a url uh the and the address bar of your of your of your of your um of your browser um it would have a secure kind of lock sign on it so if you went to any payment like say bank of Ireland or that or any e-commerce site it have a secured lock on the front of the URL. That means the website's secure. Again, you need to know how to do that and, and, and what, you're, what you're doing. If it's not there, people are not going to give their, their credit card details to the site like that. So look, it's like your premises, your website is a reflection of your, of your standards. So if it's a really poor site, if it's badly put together, it's not, it doesn't look professional, it's going to be bad reflection on, on you as an organization. There is maintenance costs. So, um, you know, if you get a web design company to do the site for you, there'd be some sort of annual maintenance contract there. And what I mean by maintenance, if things go wrong with it, they, you know, be fixed or maybe updating the site or adding new plugins in or, or updating the, 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 back, the back end of the system or the, or the, or the website. Um, someone would need to be trained up on how to uh, upload content onto the site and edit content on the site because Obviously, you're not going to hand that over to a web designer every week to do stuff. So someone's got to be, or a team of people have got to be trained up on to do it. Um, the quality of content, again, you know, a lot of sites are, are, are just, there's an awful lot of rubbish being put up there. Um, things aren't really relevant. And then people just kind of like, just kind of just skim over because there, there's nothing really there. It's just, you know, there's, 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 there's nothing really of relevance put up on the site. Or... Nothing's been put up on the site at all. So you might see the last post or last comment was made like you know three months ago. Um, so if you do engage and going online, you need to kind of stay on top of it. So again, we'd be recommending like you put a team of people involved in that. So you know, someone that's interested in doing this and and, and looking after it. Um, you can provide too much information on off our website. So just are just you go on there and it's like you know, it's wall-to-wall -wall text, um, you know, streamline it, edit it down. Don't provide too much. People won't be able to find anything that they're looking for if there's too much information on the site. So if you've got to say a fundraising campaign and you go on to a website and you can't find where to donate because there's so much crap on there, that's people aren't going to spend more than five seconds looking for it. So you know you have a big donate button, um, so they know exactly where they're going to go to donate. And once they went to the donate page, it's very very straightforward. And afterwards, again, some for some reason, some web designers overcomplicate. You got to go through loads of different hoops to get to where you want to get. Um, and someone like me, I don't have the patience to do it. So I just basically say, I forget about it. It can be bothered. So make it very easy for them to actually get to where you want them to go. Um, the quality of design, as I said, is, is really important because it reflects your, 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 your organization. Um, you might think that's, you know, is it really relevant for a not-for-profit organization? We're not like a hotel chain or we're not like a, a retailer or we're not like, you know, some sort of software company where we're trying to be, you know, really cool and, and, and have a really good, very high quality design site. And we're trying to make money out of it. Doesn't matter if you're you know if you're not a profit organization, you need to, you know, people still want to see professionalism there. Um, so you've got a family resource center or a child care facility or crash facility. If it's if the site just looks really dodge and really kind of just badly put together, it just doesn't have bad, bad reflection on, on, on the actual company itself. Because they're the first thing they will think is well, if they haven't put much thought into this, um, you know, are they put much thought into anything else? No, I might be probably overthinking this. But it's just, I think there's an opportunity out there for organizations to step up another level in terms of, you know, operating the same way that a company would operate in terms of getting their message across. And the reason why I'm saying that is because this is the opportunity now to generate more money through your site and through and get people to come to your organization. Yeah, I'm going to support them because they're really professional. I like what they do. I like their websites. You know, it's, it, it's all very, very good. 
as so well, I'm not too sure about them. They don't have a website. I can't find information about them. I don't know who's involved. It's all very kind of sketchy. You know, then I might I might be too pushed about actually um, donating. So it's it's important that you put a good a good impression out there. Um, so the options for web design, like I suppose you, this is I'm I'm foreign against this 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 point really. You can look for a local company who will develop a site for you for free, right? So um, a lot of companies want to give something back to their community. They might necessarily want to pay for something or, or donate money to the project, but they might give their time for free. Okay, and I know a couple of web design companies in in locally, one in North Kerry, particularly that is that does done a good bit of work on a voluntary basis for for groups and on their websites for free, and that's very very it's very very good and it's fantastic and fair play to them. The issue I have with with if you get someone to do something for free, um, it's very difficult to, to hound them if something's wrong. Do you know? <laughs> so, you know? So if I do something for free for someone and um, and I'm a web designer and you know there's something with it and I need to kind of update maybe a page or, or tweak something on the site and I'm really busy and they're like, well, we can't call him because geez, you know, he's doing it for free. Like I'm going to be hounding him. Whereas if you're paying someone, you can say, look, you know, Tom, you're supposed to have done by Friday. It's not done. What's going on? Um, you know, we've paid you this contract here. It's just easier to kind of to 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 to, to keep on top of, of of someone if they if they if they are if they're being paid to do something. If it's on a voluntary basis, they're not going to prioritize it, and that's you know that's just nature. You know, you know if you're if you're being paid by a client to get something done, you're going to prioritize that before you're going to do before you before you prioritize the one you're doing for free. Um, so it's, it's very important that 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 if they are doing it for free that there's still a contract there between you and them. The second thing is that after the site is up and running, um, you need them to be available to fix it if it goes wrong. Okay, so like the only person that can actually figure out what's going on with your site and fix it is a person who designed it, and that's regardless if it's done on let's say a WordPress or a standard platform. Because if you go to a web designer and say we have a website here and it's not really working very well, it's kind of rubbish. Can you can you fix it? They'll say no, I won't fix it. I'll build you a new one. Okay, so it's like you're starting from scratch again. So just they might they might do the website for free, but say look, we want to sign up, you know, to a maintenance contract for the year. How much that going to cost? And we want to pay you for that because we want to make sure that it's going to be done. Um, so just be careful with it because I know a few people that have got it done for free, and they're kind of saying, Tom, I can't give out to them because you know we haven't paid for it. So that that's an issue. Um, you know, go with a local company, you know, more so than nothing wrong with companies outside of Kerry or outside your local area, but keep it local. They'd, they'd be, you know, again, they'll just, it's just, again, goodwill as well to come back to you, you know. Um, use the, if, you, if you have some sort of design skills and you're, you know, you, 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 you kind of work, you can kind of work your way around the computer and then, you know, drag and drop kind of functionality. Um, there is two, there's lots of the DIY website builders you can use. And the ones I've used in the past are Wix.com, Weebly.com. Um, I wouldn't advise using them, even though they're easy to use. Um, you know, they, you, yeah, you can use them. They're they're easy to use. You have a website, without doubt, you have a website, but it won't look great. You know, um, it's like you know, it's like anyone can paint sort of thing. But some people are just bad paint, bad at painting. We can all do it, but some are just bad, worse than others, or they don't know what color schemes to use. So with, with websites that are built by kind of you know DIY website builders, um, unless you have an eye for design in terms of layout, what font you should use, what kind of color schemes work, what sort of spacing you need to use, how you upload pictures, you know what sort of uh, resolution should have your pictures, unless you understand these things, even though the website will work, it won't look very very good. Okay, so again, you need to some sort of maybe some design skills for that. Some people are very good at this. If you are. Brilliant, fantastic, it'll save you a bit of money, but you do pay an annual um, a fee for, for, for these as well. Um, there is funding out there. So again, look at your funding options as well. So um, you know, there's, there's lots of small grants, uh, like your, your brochure website shouldn't cost you more than, you know, probably average 2,000 euros. You probably get them for a lot less or get them for more depending on what your, how, much, how much you want to put into them. Um, and you'll always pick up small grants that you can put towards that, okay? With COVID, there was a lot of grants available for COVID to get your, your organizations online. Um, so again, a lot of groups would have applied for funding to um, assist with digital marketing, um, you know, buying laptops, buying things like that, but also um, getting getting some support for getting the website built. Um, look at sponsors. So again, if you don't have a budget for, for the website and it's costing, let's say, 1,500 euros, um, look at selling some space on the website 
uh, for sponsors. So let's say a sponsor gives you 100 euros and they get their logo on the homepage or wherever, and it's your target 10, 10 sponsors, that's 1,000 euros towards, towards, your, towards your, um, your cost, you know? Um, before you do anything, get a, if you're going down the, the online um, fundraising donation um, uh, uh, platforms, talk to, um, talk to a designer um, or just Google it in terms of which payment platform should you use. Um, I'm talking about the, the likes of commission, what's the commission you're going to be paying on, on, on transactions and so that. So your main ones are PayPal and Stripe. Um, but again, just look at what, what, your, what your transaction fees are. Um, some sites would have, you know, kind of a PayPal button. They would have, you know, credit card payment um, functions um, or they just have the base, the, a, uh, their, I, their IBAN where people can actually do electronic transfer. So they're not actually using any um, portal just paying directly into the bank from their bank. Some people would have been a, a kind of direct debit mandate form where they can sub for direct debit um, as well. So there's lots of different options there when it comes to getting paid. Um, if you're hiring a web designer, again, um, this is kind of from my own experience of being involved with web design in the past with projects we were involved with, and then some horror stories that my, my clients would have had with web designers over the years. Um, so basically, if you're going with a payment function, if you're if you're doing an e-commerce website, which basically means you can get payments onto your site, um, and you're doing things like online registration for like events like this, or not, you might have an online shop. So I know a few few um, not for profit organizations and community voluntary organizations that have online shops where they might sell, you know, calendars of the local village. They might sell artwork. They might sell, you know, t-shirts. They might sell just produce um, or products um, to make a bit of money. Um, you have a donate page there. Make sure you use a reputable web designer um, that knows what they're doing and understands e-commerce platforms. Okay, because. That's really, really important because if let's say someone's going on to buy something on an online shop and it's not working, they're never going to come back again to your site. If someone's to, is trying to register something online and it keeps coming up, error messages come up or, or just freezes or whatever, they won't come back there again. But the worst of all, if someone donates some money and they're trying to donate and it freezes and they're not too sure if it's gone or not gone, um, that's when you've got serious problems there because they won't, they won't go near you again. But they'll also probably put the word out there on your social media pet channels you know, things like um, don't go near the website. Um, I, 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 I try to donate 100 euros and um, I got, it got frozen out or, or, the, or the website crashed. That's a disaster then, okay? Because you got to go back into designer and get that problem fixed. If they're not, if they're like a freelancer or if they're only kind of doing this on a part-time base or there might be a student or a relative of someone you know, they might be wrong. Like, so you might, you might have a situation where they're gone holidays for the week and you've got a, your website's down you you know you got to you know you 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 no one can get onto the site no one can access it you call them the phone rings out and they say well, I won't be back to next Tuesday week you've now got a problem so again make sure that you've got a design company that can provide um, twenty four seven access and support if it's an e commerce um, uh, related site that's very important if you're a business but if you're looking for money online and donations that's as important as someone buying a, a, a nice McClothing from an online clothes shop. Um, make sure to provide a support service. That's what the point I was making there. I said, there's no point in, in, in ringing up someone, they're like, oh, they're, they're, they're having a beer in a bar in the beach or somewhere, and you're like, you know, putting your hair out because you can't access your website. Um, make sure the web designer understands search engine, search engine optimization. So SEO is where you, you put in, say, a search uh, term into Google, for example, let's say, you know, local fundraiser or local charity or whatever. Um, your your page come up within the first five or six on definitely on the first page of the actual the, the search results. So a lot of web designers would say, oh yeah, we're very good at SEO. You know, we that's included in the price, blah, 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 blah. Get a list of their, their websites that they've done. Okay. Pick a few keywords that we related to those websites and Google search them and see how how high up the rankings those websites show up. If they don't show up, that means the web designer is basically lying to you that they're not very good at SEO. Again, a lot of web designers will say they're good at something. Um, I'm not because it's not like I'm putting web designers down, I'm not, but just again, if you're paying for something, you know, make sure that you're getting what you're paying for because that's important. Again, if someone says, oh, how do I donate? Oh yeah, go onto my site there and they go home and they can't think of the site and they start putting in search, search words and they can't find you, you've lost you know, an opportunity there. Um, look at samples of their work. So again, talk to their clients, ask them, you know, was it done in time? Was it done to the spec that we wanted? Was it done to the price we agreed? What was their customer service like? Uh, how easy were, easy were they to deal with? 
um, when there was an issue, how quick were they back to you? So just those sort of things, right? Again, you're, you're, you're investing in this thing, you wanna make sure you're, you're not gonna be left stuck with a site that's kind of not working afterwards. Um, if you can go with a web designer that also does digital marketing or has someone in house that does digital marketing. So what we would normally do there is we would go with a web designer and we would ask them, you know, is there anyone in their, in their firm that can do or themselves, can they do digital marketing? Because what you want is someone to train you up on how to update the website, but also would give you kind of a digital marketing kind of strategy or plan that you can follow. And they'll advise you on what you need to put up on your social media, um, how to do email marketing kind of stuff, right? Because you're trying to learn this yourself, so you're not going to be spending money on, on, on getting consultants to do it uh, forevermore. So there's lots of training courses, for example, on digital marketing, um, on email marketing, on, on social media marketing, that you know, whoever is responsible for your online presence should be doing these courses. Um, make sure you have a clear brief for the designer in terms of what you need. Again, if you don't have a clear brief, uh, what happened there is basically they, sorry, they will, um, they will um, come back to you with something you don't want, or they'll have added in something you don't want, or they won't have done something that you actually do want. So make sure you got a brief. I always advise, and anything you do, um, agree the brief, write out the brief, and get the designer to sign it, and you sign it, and date it, okay? So the can't come back and say, well, I taught you meant X when you actually meant, to, meant, meant A and B. So it's just, again, a lot of companies we work with, would have got badly burnt with with with, with things like this, not just on, graphic, on on web design, but on other projects where the brief wasn't agreed or was agreed in, in, in principle or agreed verbally, and, and there's nothing to fall back on. So again, agreed in writing. Um, for any grants that you're getting for web design, again, you need some like three quotations. Now, what you can do there is you get a web design company you know of and they're very, very good, just get them to get the quotes for you. you ring them and say, look, you know, we want you to get the gig um but like you get us to two other quotes that's that's you know that's their that's their responsibility then afterwards they'll find two other web designers who give you give them quotes uh, but you will need three quotations for most most grant applications okay so that's your web design side of it I mean, just a couple examples of, of, of some charity sites this is bumblance uh based out tree um they're all probably familiar with so they if you go into their website they have like you know home page about us the kids stories so case studies about the kids that they've supported how to get involved uh, corporate stuff, events that they're doing, and then donate. So you click on the donate button and you've got all these options, right? So you can text to, this actually, this has been updated since um, the, 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 since I put a screen together or this slide together. Um, so it's slightly changed now. But at that point, they had a, you could text to a text donation for four euros donation, you could donate to the bank accounts. So when you clicked on the, the plus here, the IBAN details came up. You can make a post donation, you could do electronic bank transfer, or you could donate a prize or service, right? On the on their donate page, they had uh, the details of the tax relief for donations to eligible charities. So that's basically if you uh, if a payee worker gives you two hundred and fifty euros, um, minimum two hundred and fifty euros in, in in that year, um, and that could be two hundred and fifty euros one off payment, or it could be done over twelve months, or whatever, by direct debit. Um, you fill out a tax form. Uh, they said they fill out a tax form with revenue. Uh, they give you that form and you submit that form which you're with, 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 you've been to revenue and you can then claim the tax they paid on that donation. Uh, so it's, you, you think it works out about maybe 126 euros, something like that more on top of 250. So it's a very good way of getting the top up on the donation you get from payway workers. Most people aren't aware of that. So what they've done is they put in there that, you know, if you give us 250, we can actually claim some of that back uh, from revenue through the tax relief and donations, okay? So again, the, what I like about this is that people have different options um, as well, okay? So when you click on Donate Now, very, very straightforward, nothing very fancy. Uh, click on Donate Now and you're into the Donate, donate, to the donate page, okay? Um, this is another one, PA to the house. I uh, like what they do. Um, I like the, the way they, they, they've set up their, their, their website because, again, similar to, to uh, Bumblins, they've got a how can we can help about with events, contact, donate, right? So when you go into donate, you can actually click on, a, a, on an amount, right? And that's clever because you're, you know, now what they could have done here and be even more clever would be that they'd have like say 20 euros kind of like here, they'd have 100 euros here, which they have, and then they'd have the 50 euros kind of like in bigger, in a bigger box and say our most popular or our most common donation is 50 euros because people are kind of always drawn to the one in the middle for some reason. 
Um, and people say, well, yeah, like, yeah, I'll click on 50 because lots of people are giving 50 euros, so I'll give 50 euros as well. Because again, people just psychologically, they'll say, yeah, everyone's doing that, so I'll give it too. Um, and you can put in your different amounts and that. But what I like about this is that they, they tell you where the money's going to, right? So if you donate 20 euros, it'll help our caring therapist answer two more calls to our helpline. And if you give 1,000 euros, so like let's say a company giving 1,000 euros donation, that would be an entire program of counseling services for one person uh, with suicidal ideation. Okay, so you know that if I give a thousand euros, I'm helping someone here. Um, it's life changing, right? So they're telling you what what they get. I've seen other clubs then do it where you know they say that if you donate, um, you know, forty euros, or whatever, that goes towards you know our, our gear for the year or something like that. You often see with with the the ones on TV, the various different charities for um, UNICEF and things like that and Chopra. And they say like, you know, one euro per week will save a child's eyes or something like that, right? So they, they, they're telling you where the money's going to. And normally they'll break it down, loan up. They're thinking, geez, that's like, you know, a couple of cups of coffee per week. And if I get that over, instead of drinking a couple, 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 couple of cups of coffee per week, I'm making a difference. And that's why they do it. They, they make it sound like, you know, for two euros a month or five euros a month, whatever it is. If they said like for 600 euros a year, um you can just that's too much but if you break it down per per month it's a lot less so again this clever way of doing it and um, again so it's like you know it's the end they're thanking people so well it's, it's really about um giving them options really you know so it's not just saying like donate and give us something they're 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 kind of they're showing what you can actually provide um so okay, so that's if you're your own, so that's if you're your own website. Okay, so you can very easily to do this. You have your website, which are about us. You know the work we do. You know our policies and procedures, our annual report, and then a, a donate page. And a donate page will look something like this in terms of how they can donate. Um, all that's relatively straightforward. All that's not that expensive to do. But you can see straight away you're you're you got a you know full time you know fundraiser going on here. This isn't like a one off event. On a, on, a, on a Saturday in Tesco or it's not a one-off event in a fashion show or a cake sale or a bake sale or a night of the dogs or, or whatever. This is this is there constantly. Your job is to get people there the whole time, get them to go back the whole time to your to your site so they can actually donate and they can go there and make it make it very easy to do it. A lot of people now are on, on, on their phones. They're, they're using their phones for everything. They're, they're, they're using their phone for their credit card. You know, for payments, they're using everything, right? So, if you look at say the success of the 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 late show, the late show on RT during COVID, the amount of money, the millions of money they raised over over that period of time, huge amount of money. Um, you know, the reason why they were so successful is that people couldn't go out and don't give money because there, there was no fundraising going on. But the main thing was that they were sitting there with their glass of wine on a Friday night, watching the late show with their phone in their hand. And, that they could very easily go into the website, donate, or go and text the money, text, you know, five euros to whatever. Um, it was very easy done, right? So, but they were getting traction. They like hundreds of thousands of people watching the show, doing nothing else. They were at home, uh, but they, their payment function was in their hand, their, their mobile phone, right? Didn't have to go anywhere to give cash, didn't write out a check and post it. It was literally, and it's all support of month stuff, you know? So if they're thinking, if they get a, a guest on, on, the, on the show, and they're, they're telling a very kind of heartfelt story about their life and what, what struggles they're going through. And it's all about, you know, the emotional stuff side of it. People thinking, geez, like, you know, I need to get something here. And their, their payment is on, their payment function is on their phone. So they'll do it. Okay. If they go into a, a site like this and they say 20 euros, 50 euros, 100 euros, and you put up, you know, people tonight have all, you know, the, you know, I've been very generous and the, the most, most of our donations are 50 euro donations. People then are thinking, I'll give that as well. Okay, so that's that's how they they, they use these things. It's marketing. Um, it's about kind of you know it's about the whole kind of psychological kind of you know influence that's going on with this in terms of you giving people options, and that's why they raise so much money because everyone was there, everyone had access to their to their to their their payment function, or payment process. Um, okay, so without websites and a, a kind of a very quick fast way of getting into into your online fundraisers is using third party platforms like i donate uh, or gofundme is probably the one you're most familiar with so there's different ones out there um what i would normally do is i'd go through a list of all the ones that are there and i look at what kind of transaction fees that they're charging and go with, with the ones that are most i suppose the ones that are most popular that people trust and then the one that's the, the, that's, that's 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 taking the least amount of transaction fees so that most of your, most money is going to ye so I think, for example, the 5% transaction fee per donation. Um, but what they do is, is getting clever that the, the donor can actually pay that 5%. Right? So if they're giving, let's say, 50 euros, for example, right? 
um, and there's 5% coming off that, they can give the 5% on top of it. So the donor paying, is paying for it rather than the charity paying for it. But there's no other fees then. So again, you go into create a page, sorry, register, create a page, and you, put, you, you create your own fundraising page, okay? Then you go out and tell people, we're doing a fundraiser for an event, go to I donate or go to GoFundMe, and you can donate, donate there. The problem with that is that you're, you're sending them to someone else's website, you're sending them somewhere else, they're not sending them back to your website, okay? So if they're on there and your page is kind of, you know, not giving a huge amount of information, they, they, there's enough of a kind of a, a, of a story, there's enough of kind of a, a, a sales pitch to them to convince them to, to give the money, you know? But they might give the money because they know you and they said they would, but um, if it's someone that they don't know and they want to find out more information about why they're giving money, Sometimes it's difficult to do that on, on, on one of these, these, these um, sites. Uh, so GoFundMe is what a lot of um, fundraisers uh, that are doing fundraising uh, individually, they would do. So like say for someone that's trying to raise money for their local event or charity, they'll, they'll do a separate GoFundMe page. Um, there's been you know, a lot of, I think it was the last one I saw there, was that, that girl that was beaten up in Dublin a um, few, nearly a month ago, the last to rise site. Um, they separate GoFundMe page for her. And they raised like huge amounts of money in, in, in a very, very short period of time. So it was, it was someone set up the page for her. Um, you know, so a lot of people will do kind of sub go for me pages uh, to raise money for a specific event. You find if they're doing, say, a charity event, like, say, um, a marathon or, or a 10K or, or, or a cycle or, or, you know, mountain climb or something like that, then people can, can, donate money to their cause by going on their GoFundMe page. So a lot of individuals do it that don't have their own website. Um, and it does work really, really well because people are familiar with it and they know they can know how to navigate around it. Um, again, they charge 2.9% transaction fee plus 30 cent per donation. And there's no other registration fees, sign up fees, okay? Um, so again, it's, it's a kind of, if you want to do something quick to get it off the ground and you don't have a website and it's going to take you months to get a website ready, you know, definitely something like GoFundMe will, will work. But in long term, have your own platform. Um, no reason why these kind of work as well is that people trust them because they, they're, they're used to donating on them. So whereas if, again, if your website is new or doesn't look great, they mightn't trust us as much as the trustees. Um, again, just giving is another one um, in terms of uh, fundraising site. Um, again, there's, there's lots of them out there, I suppose the most popular ones would be GoFundMe. Um, this normal then is, is Altruism Ireland, where it's a zero kind of, they take uh, no uh, fees on donations. Again, um, it's relatively new. So again, if you go in there in terms of fundraising for charities, there's, there's the expectation how to do it, set up the page. So again, you're set up a page on their platform and people are going there then to donate money towards, towards your cause. Again, very, very popular with individuals, more so than, than um, the kind of well-established companies or organizations. Um, text campaigns. Uh, I like text campaigns because it's, it's really easy to do. So you're just basically texting, you know, five euros to to to, to um, whatever number. Um, so like charity is the one that that most companies use. Um, again, if you look at say the the likes of Radio Kerry and and a few of the radio stations, a lot of their 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 fundraising campaigns are text campaigns. So text, you know whatever blah 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 to five five whatever seven seven or whatever it might be um but it's, it's normally like only a couple of euros they're looking for maybe two four euros five or six euros so it's not a lot of money but it's all about then volume so if you get say you know a thousand people giving you five euros that's five grand you know and if you got say you know four thousand people listening to the radio show um and there's someone there saying look this is what we're trying to do um the the um let's put a mute there so again, in terms of the, um, just make it easy for people. That's, that's the key thing. Like you're not asking for hundred euros. You're asking for 500 euros, you're asking for 50 euros. You're asking for like maybe just text five or six euros to this number, you know? So again, it's, it's just, it's just a, another easy way for people to actually donate. And that's what it's all about. People want, you know, flexibility. They want to, you know, it's, want, it's all about everything has to be immediate now. So the thought of having to, you know, go somewhere and give money to something or go to an event. Just, they just, you know, a lot of people actually just buy tickets for race nights. They never go there. You know, I don't know how many people come to our door in the past looking for, selling us tickets for a night of the dogs for school or for the clubs or whatever. And you just buy the tickets and you never go to it. Like you just put tickets on top of the shelf and you don't bother going to it, but you still, you still donate. That's why, that's why these work because they don't want to actually get involved, but they want to get something and it's the easiest way to do it. Um, Facebook fundraising then. So if you go onto your Facebook page, if you have a Facebook page, um, you can do your, your fundraiser through, through uh, Facebook. 
So again, you click on fundraisers, you 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 go in and you follow the kind of on-screen um, instructions there. Again, they don't charge any fees, um, so it, all the money is going back to your back to your charity. So I know a good few organizations that have that have used their their, their Facebook to for the fundraisers. Um, again, with Facebook, you can you can provide other information as well, so you can give links to why it is you're donating um, to the project. Um, that could be like say video material, it could be promotional material, it could be you know, drawings of the building or, 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 or a facility where like the same 3D images of what the building will look like when it's completed. Um, a lot of the projects we work with, um, say disability projects or childcare projects or, or you know, older person's projects, they'll get the people that are benefiting from the project to talk. So they'll say how this project has been life changing for them, you know, that they're, they're that'll save them or whatever, you know. Um, rather than say the coordinator or the manager or the chairperson come out talking about it, They'll, they'll actually have the people that are benefiting talking about it. Um, so again, you've got a lot of say groups will say um, use say images or, or, or video or let's say if it's a sports club, the academy, like you know playing on a Saturday morning, uh, kids you know getting involved in sport, training, being coached, and like they might put up a message saying like you know help us get more get more people involved, help us get our facilities improved or something like that. You know, so people can see where the money is going to go to. Um, very, it's a lot more impact than, than just someone kind of like talking about it. Um, okay, so Facebook, Facebook fundraising in, so fundraising through your social media pages, um, relatively straightforward to do. Again, there's no real skills involved here. You don't need to be an IT specialist to do it. Just follow the on-screen instructions. A lot of these things, again, you, there's, there's lots of tutorials and stuff how to do it. Um, so you don't need to go up and it's been a lot of money getting someone to show you how to do it. Then you, you might be familiar with the online lotto. So, all the clubs over the last two and a half years, you know, who couldn't go into pubs collecting money for their local lotto every week. Um, and we're struggling to generate money from the local lotto went online. Uh, so we're involved in a, we've a, I'm involved in Park FC, Simmons Park FC, and we've an online lotto as, as managed through Club Force. So again, um, it's another way of looking at it. So again, it could be, you could be looking for your own organization in terms of how can we do our online lotto. Again, the great thing about that is that Let's say you got a, the old fashioned way of doing it where you go into the, the local pub on a Friday evening with the, the, the book of tickets and trying to sell your lottery tickets in and around the pub. And we've all been there on, on the other side of it. Um, like your, your, your club members that are living in, in New York, that's a no good to them. They can't, they can't give anything. Whereas if you do an online lotto, uh, your club member who's now moved over to New York or to Australia or to wherever, they can still do a lot every week because they're this online. So you're, you're, you're still tapping into them. I know my own, my own nephew, he's over in the States and he's doing the, the, the Park of Sea Lotto um, every week. Um, so it's just, you know, you're, you're just open up your, your Lotto to a, big, a way bigger market, a way bigger audience, you know, and, and it does save a lot of time in terms of, in terms of collecting money uh, every week from, from, from your, 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 your local village or whatever. Um, so again, Club Forces, there's, there's other ones out there as well. It's probably the most popular one, I suppose, at the moment. Out there, I think they got some like four thousand clubs registered with them. I think it's something fairly phenomenal at this stage, anyway. Um, and again, it's got all the, their 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 um their fee structures as well there, you know. But again, okay, you are paying fees. You might think, well, if I don't use them, I don't pay any fees. But the fees to me are are, are you know saving you a lot of time, um, a lot of volunteer time. If you actually values the the hours you spend collecting money as a volunteer. Um, it's probably multiples of the actual transaction fees you'd be paying if you're doing it via, via one of these platforms. Um, so your fundraisers, and so the key thing with your online fundraising is that you need to be clever about it because um, otherwise it won't work. You could have like you could have a very good website, you could have a really good campaign, you could have a you know very easy to use donation page, all this kind of stuff. But it, it's all about marketing at the end of the day. You need to to get people to actually get involved in it. Um, and if you're not knocking on the door, persuading them at the door to buy a ticket for the race night or to buy a ticket for the local raffle or to buy a lottery ticket or whatever it might be, and you're not there kind of selling it to them, um, you've got to rely on your, your, your website or your social media or your, your, your message that you got across. That's going to be doing the selling for them, okay? So the key thing really with this, and this is the, you know, what we, we focus on the whole time, whether it be traditional fundraising or online fundraising. Um, Basically, peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is what you need to do, okay? So let's say I emailed you all randomly, right, tomorrow, and I know some of you and I don't know the rest of you, and you see a, an email coming from me or, or a text message saying, like, you know, 
um, help us raise money for our, our local pitch, right? And you're like going, who has this guy? You just ignore it. You probably ignore the text or the email or whatever it might be because you don't know who I am. If it's someone you know, brother, sister, mother, father, grandparent, you know, friend, relative, work colleague, club colleague, right? And they say, geez, look, we're involved in this really good project locally. Uh, they're raising money for a local pitch. Uh, they have a fantastic uh, campaign or a fantastic fundraiser at the moment. Uh, can you, can I sign you up for two tickets, right? Chances are, now you might say yes, you might say not, hell of it, I'm not going to be bothered. But th- there's a greater chance of you saying yes, I will. Even though you know nothing about the club, you're not involved in the club or anything like that. But because you know the person that's asking you for the money, um, you've got a better chance of getting that money rather than if they say someone just cold calling you that you know where they are. So it's really important to look at peer-to-peer fundraising. So when we do um, fundraisers, right, with, whether it be online or whether it be your traditional type of selling tickets fundraisers, we do kind of like it's kind of the power 10 campaign, we call it. So you get one person, each each person saying, so maybe maybe 10 people on the on a, on a, on a fundraising committee for an event. And each of those people, so that's 10 people, go and find 10 people. So that's 100 people now are going to be targeted uh, for that event. For that, for that fundraiser, let's say they're, they're, they're let's say they're, the tickets are twenty five euros each. Now that's that's bringing you in um, two and a half grand straight away just with that ten people around the table. Okay, so if they if you go to that ten people and they look for another, so it's like a pyramid scheme, really, right? Or it's like a Ponzi scheme, but it's not. It's like it's it's really where you're trying to build up your 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 connections, your network. Okay, so where these things work really really well, and that's why online is very very effective because. Online network and the social network is all about liking people liking us, passing on, passing on, and passing on, and going viral, right? So you know, you all get these jokes on WhatsApp as being you know passed on and passed on and passed on and passed on and passed on, and it spreads around the place like wildfire, okay? Because it's going from peer to peer. So if you're in a WhatsApp group, it goes to maybe ten people in your WhatsApp group. They then turn some on to their family WhatsApp group, who then turn some on to their colleagues' work WhatsApp group, to their golf buddies WhatsApp group, to their their coaching WhatsApp group, and it goes crazy. Okay, that's the power of of, of that network spreading out and spreading and spreading out. So when you're doing it physically in terms of selling tickets, and you target ten people, and they target ten people, and they target ten people based on who they know. That's how that's how it starts spreading from the one central part out onto as many people as poss- people as you possibly can go. Okay, so if you look at say one in four emails from peer to peer fundraisers result in donations. Okay, one in four. That's compared to one in one thousand two hundred fifty emails from a person from a nonprofit from you don't from a person you don't know. So a random email comes in, another kind of you know um, junk mail basically, uh, cold calling, no idea who they are, no links to them, no ties to them. It's not going to bother me in the slightest by saying no because I couldn't care less about the man away. But if it's your brother saying, give us 25 euros, you can't, you can tell him no as well, but it's more difficult to say no to them than it would be to the, the other people that you don't know. So that's why it's very important to do peer to peer fundraising. And that's why you use the, the your connections and your, 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 you start off with your local connections first, people you know. Okay. So when I'm involved in, say, fundraisers within, within the local club, we will look around the coaching staff. And we say, okay, how many of the coaches are working for big companies or how many coaches are working for themselves? And we start then with that group of coaches as the potential sponsors for the sponsorship campaigns, okay? And then we'll go to the parents who kids are playing every week and we'll go to them and say, look, can you, you know, we buy a ticket because, look, your kids are playing there. We're volunteering our time, coaching. We're not asking you to get involved in coaching. We're just asking you, it's 25 euros and that's all we're asking for, okay? And then... We'd be hoping then that they would go out and they would talk to their friends and colleagues to see, look, you know, little Johnny's playing with the, the, the club down the road. They're, they've got a great campaign going. They're going to be doing great, a bit of work, great club, blah, 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 blah. Can you help out? That's how you, you, you build it out, okay? So by doing that online, is easier because you can start using all those connections and all those, all those, all those existing connections and groups very easily. Um, some, some campaigns in are what we call a choose a day campaign. I like these for certain projects. I don't like them for other projects um, or for certain organizations. I don't like for, 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 for different organizations. They work really well for um, national organizations. Like take Daffodil Day, Daffodil Day, Daffodil Day, for example, right? Um, or the Alzheimer's Tea Day, as I think it's Tea Day. Um, it's a one-off event, right? It's one day in a year, okay? And it works very well for a national thing. For a local thing, uh, you know, you're not going to have the, the 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 volume of people that's going to generate enough revenue for just that one day event. 
Um, it's fine if it's national because it's like everywhere in the country, everyone can get involved and donate and have a tea party or sell it after or buy it after or whatever it might be. If it's a local village and you're doing it only for one day only, you're not going to get the, the traction you need. So I'm kind of against it for smaller, smaller things, but for larger ones, it works really, really well. Um, so again, like, you know, the one thing about the, the day, choose day campaign, you can actually can do a lot of kind of promotional stuff around that. And you can build it up as like, you know, it's like, you know, this is the day, you know, where we're going to be, we're aiming for folks on this one day. If you take, say, the, 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 the Ring and Carry Charity Cycle, it's a one day event. Okay. But they're not fundraising in just that one day. They're fundraising for, you know, three or four months out onto the new event. But the day itself is the, is the big thing. That's the, that's the kind of the target. And that's what we're trying to, they're, they're building up to. So again, you can do a lot of work around that in terms of your social media channels, building up to it today. Like, you know, we're nearly there, four more steeps to go, this kind of stuff, right? Um, but for smaller, smaller type of the projects, it, it, you just, if, you, if you don't get the, the results that you want on that day, you're kind of screwed in because the day is gone. And you, know, you can't say, well, actually, we'll put it all in next Friday and do try it again. You, you can only have one chance at it because it's a, it's a, it's a day campaign. Um, this one is, is, the, is the donation matching, right? So this is where, and again, a lot of larger companies do this and corporations do it, is where they'll get their staff to do fundraising for a charity, right? So um, a lot of, like say, if you take, say, Lidl or Little, they, they do um, different fundraisers every year and they ask their staff to nominate a charity, right? But it's the staff that actually raise the money. So in some certain cases, then companies, especially smaller companies, what they'll say is, look, if you raise, you know, 100 euros to, to, for, for your local charity, you do maybe a cycling event or a 10K or a marathon or something, we'll match it, okay? So it, get, it becomes a kind of a part of the whole kind of company get behind it then, so it becomes like a team building thing. Um, it's kind of, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of PR around it as well. Um, you know, companies will get involved, it's kind of a whole kind of team building between the staff. It's about the company getting involved and working with their staff as well. So like we've seen it happen before with smaller companies where the, the, the owner of the company will say, look, you know, you know, if you're if you're for example, take the ring carry cycle again, we had one company there years ago. They had five people that had a team from the company, they got jerseys and everything made up with the company logos on it. And whatever they raised, the company said they would match it pound for pound or euro to euro. Um, and very, very successful. So you can be very clever with things like that as well, especially again, if it's, if it's a local um, project, or even a local company, um, look at, like, say, matching it, you know. Now, they might match it euro to euro, but they might give maybe, let's say, they might have like, five of their staff who are taking part in the event. They might provide a, a spot prize or something like that, you know. Um, again, you see with golf classics, they might, they might uh, enter a team in the golf classic. Uh, they might sponsor a tee box or a green. They might sponsor the longest drive and they might sponsor something for the raffle that or the, the raffle that night at the, the dinner dance or something, you know. But it's part of a kind of a, a corporate thing for them to get involved with their staff and that you know it's kind of day out as well, as well as well as everything else. So just be clever how you do it. Okay. Um in terms of the 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 kind of online viral campaigns, then the ones that you're probably familiar with, this is a really, really good campaign that worked really, really well. So this was the, the Shave or Die campaign for um the Irish Cancer Society. Um and it was done through, I think it was Today FM, it was, it was started off with. Um, and again, basically, either, you either shaved your head or you, you dyed your hair as, and for, to raise money. So let's say you're going shaving your head and people then donate money to you uh, because you were doing this for, for, for the cancer charity. Um, because it was done through a national media station, it got a lot of traction, a lot of, a lot of, pub, a lot of publicity, um, and generated a lot, of, a, a lot of, um, of, 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 I suppose, exposure, really, because you had all the celebrity presenters getting involved in it and using, you know, they were, they were, they were using their time and their voice for free to, to promote it. Um, when it went on, obviously last year, you know, because of COVID and all that, it went online. So it was kind of like a, a virtual way of doing it. And again, it was fairly successful again, because you can, you people could actually, you know, you didn't have to go somewhere. You could take, you know, get your camera out, get some of the kind of, you know, record your shaving your head or something or dyeing your hair. And again, it just meant it could go viral. So that's a good example of not saying you copy this, but, the point I'm making is that if you do something that's kind of clever, funny, bit of a laugh, bit of crack, um, people will start will start buying into it and start getting involved in it. I suppose the biggest one was the Ice Bucket Challenge um, back in 2014. Um, like that raised $220 million. Um, and that was, just, you know, again, that wasn't the the um, the organization behind the motor neuron disease, the, 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 the research department or whatever. It was actually people came up with this idea for this thing. 
And it went, it went, it went crazy because everyone got started getting involved in this. And of course, then kids wanted to throw book advice over their teachers. Sports people got involved in this. Celebrities got involved in this. Politicians got involved in it. Barack Obama got involved in this. You know, and it went, it went nuts with viral, and everyone was doing it to raise money. Um, and it wasn't even about the raising money part of it. That was probably secondary to it. What people were doing it for was a bit of a laugh and you know, a bit of crack. Um, and the, they were raising money as well, but the, the raise money part really kind of took a back seat, but they still raised $220 million. So again, I'm not saying copy that. Point being is that do something clever, unique, different, bit of fun that people get involved with, not dangerous or too risky or anything like that. Um, and you know, again, with social media, with camera phones, with, you know, it's very easy to do just to take a photograph, take a video of something, people put it up there and they can, they can, um, they can start generating a lot of kind of attention of it. Um, you know, so again, just be careful with us. We, we did a campaign there years ago with the, with the Rain and Kerry um, when we were involved in the, the commercial side of things with them. And we, we realized there was cyclists from all over the world um, registering for the Rain and Kerry cycle in July because um, we could see where they're coming from in terms of their window registering. And we mapped it out in the world in terms of all the cities and the, the, the different countries they're, they're going to be coming from to travel over and cycle. So what we asked them to do was we asked people to um, take a photograph of their the location they were in when they were, when they were training. When they were all cycling, say, training, doing the 50K or whatever on a Monday night or a Tuesday night or whatever it was, but they were training for the event, that they would take a picture of a landmark, you know, well-known uh, landmark in the country they were in. So you, we got people saying teachers like the old San Francisco, um, the group was Golden Gate Bridge. You know, obviously people locally take pictures of like, you know, um, uh, the Blasket Islands in the background or, or the windmill in Bineville or something like that. And new people in like New York taking photographs, people in Australia taking photographs. And they got people that weren't even actually taking part in the cycle, <laughs> taking photographs and sending them on to us. And it became kind of this kind of competitive thing because people were saying, oh, I'll try to better them. You know, I'm, I'm here at a pyramid or something, right? But what we didn't do as well as time, looking back and we showed them was kind of, it was utilize that to say, okay, have some sort of competition with us to see, you know, you know, have people say maybe donate and, and pick their, 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 their best photograph or the best, whatever it might be. But what, what we did prove was that if you put up an idea, very simple idea, you'll get a huge amount of traction on it. And a lot of people are going on, on, the, on the, 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 the page then just looking at the images we put up there. And what we wanted was we wanted as many hits as possible on the social media channels. So when we were going out to our sponsors, we could say, look, we've got huge traction here on our social media. Um, this is something you really should get involved in because you get a lot of eyes on your product and on your brand by being part of the cycle. Um, because a lot, a lot of sponsors are saying, well, it's only one day and we'll only get exposure for one day. We're saying, no, you get exposure for months out because we're, we're doing these social media campaigns to get, get, them, get them onto social media, which gave them, gave them exposure in terms of their brand. Um, so again, promoting your campaign. So if you've got to come up with a really clever, doesn't be that, that clever, just any sort of campaign, but the more clever or unique or innovative it is, the better. Um, again, so do, do, do like, you know, you have to promote it. So there's no point having a really good, as I said, website donation page, a really good campaign if people aren't aware of it. So use your social media. Um, so it's like what we call a hub and spoke. So with social media, because a lot of people think that, well, if I just have a social media platform, it'll get me lots of business or lots of money or lots of revenue. It won't. It will, it will, it'll be, it's the spoke that's out there that will drag people back to where you want them to spend money. So if you take it from a business point of view, if you've got to say um, a shop in town, right? And you, you're using social media. Social media is going to sell, you know, unless you're selling through that platform, you know, it's only going to get people into your shop. So it's a spoke that's bringing them back into the hub and the hub is the actual shop, okay? So if you want them to go to your website to donate money to you, you've got to, to spread that word out around the place and you do that through social media and you give them some sort of a reason to go back to the site and donate, okay? So you've got to give them something that is, is get, catching their interest um, or something that they're aware of and they want to get involved in it, okay? So a lot of, a lot of times like charities that are, say, cancer support charities, Children's charities, um, animal charities um, normally do very well because people can relate to it. You know, they can be, you know, they, 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 you can kind of see why people would want to give money. Whereas if it's not something that's very well known, like a, a local club or a group or even tight towns groups and like that, there's no, you know, there's no kind of emotional tie there um, unless they're involved in the club to give money to it. So you have to find some reason for them to, to donate. And that's, that's, the, that's the challenge really with, 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 with fundraising. 
So you have to give them something that they can see as, as tangible that they're actually money too, okay? So the hub is where you want them to go to. So that's going back to where they can click on the button and they can pay money or go onto the website, go on to GoFundMe or go onto the, the phone and text their donation to whatever number it is, okay? But you've got to get that message out there in as many ways you possibly can, right? So again, email campaigns, uh, WhatsApp groups and text groups. Uh, so again, with our, with our fundraiser we're doing at the moment for Park C, we're working through, there's about probably five or six different, not probably more, there's multiple WhatsApp groups for coaches, for parents, for of, of, of the players, for the academy players. Um, and we're basically putting out the message about, reminding them about the fundraiser every probably once a week. Um, and then, of course, when I get that on my WhatsApp, I didn't send out to my WhatsApp, WhatsApp groups as well. Um, and we hope that they would we, they would then support it as well. So you're using your, your social media platforms. Um, put out local notes. So if you've got a local notes and the paper, um, remind people about it. Um, if you've got a newsletter, whether it be an online newsletter or a print newsletter, put it out there. Do a bit of PR around it, so launch it. Um, you know, if you're doing a fundraiser, do do a launch campaign. You know, get the papers involved, a photo shoot. Uh, you know, we're now launching our, our fundraiser to raise, you know, half a million euros to do whatever. Do do a big campaign around it. You know, you got your local press, so your carry man, your 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 carry's eye, your radio carry, your tree today, your advertisers, your 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 outlooks, your connect magazines. You know, get your get get the photo shoot and that. Do a bit of PR around us. So again, but make sure if you're doing a PR around this thing, you're doing a press release make sure that you've got the details of where you can go to donate on the, on those details. I've seen so many um, press releases about a fundraiser. You're like looking through the article and going, okay, this is great, but where do I go to, where do I actually donate? No, I don't know where I'm going to go here. No, I could go and search more and go and look for it online or whatever, but chance I probably won't. Whereas if you've got to say like, you know, a text number, or if you've got to say, you know, go to our Facebook page, or go to our website and go to our donation page, wherever it might be, um, you know, contact the club even. But sometimes people put in this great press release about what they're going to do, how they're going to do it, but they forget to actually ask for anything, okay? So if you were working in sales, you, you know, there's no point giving the sales pitch unless you ask for the, the sale at the end of the sales pitch. So if you're doing anything around PR, around your fundraisers, make sure they have somewhere to go to actually donate, okay? Very, very important. And that should be set up. There's no point saying, oh, we're in the process of setting up a website, don't do the campaign until our search campaign and your marketing until you're actually ready to go. So there's no point like saying we're going to open up a shop in three weeks time. You know, you you do you do the launch after the shop is open, so you can you're you're ready to go. Uh, do local radio interviews as well. Get on the on, on radio carry. Um, you know, as us for like five minutes of their time to to go on there and say, look, you know, we just want to promote what we're doing here. Um, I, I, you know, I've seen a lot of, of, of people ringing in the, the radio shows, national radio shows like Spin Salt West, Today FM, uh, News Talk, and they've, they've got to manage to get on airtime about their the local fundraiser, especially if it's a quirky, different type thing, right? So you might have seen the guy that, that's, the, he's in his 80s from Donegal, and he's raised money, I think, for his, the, is it for the Sea Rescue, I think, something like that. And he's traveling down the coast of around the coast of Ireland, swimming, uh, jumping off piers and swimming, right? In the middle of winter, which is very, very fair play to him. He's got an unbelievable amount of um uh, of, of press coverage, uh, both you know, online, newspapers, uh, social media, uh, radio, TV, and the whole aspect has been picked up. It's so unique, uh, but it just shows you the power of it. It's something that's clever and unique and different. It will be picked up on by the by the by the by the by the by the, um, the um, broadcast and print media and social media. <clears throat> so again, po do post campaigns as well. Again, it, it annoys me when I when I when I work with groups and they're doing a fundraiser for building works, and no one knows what they're building. Um, or like all they look at is a field and they see a, a grass field with cows grazing in there, and they're trying to raise money for, you know, they're, they're putting a building on there, but no one knows what it's going to be, no one's going to look like when it's going to happen. So someone said to me, we're, we're fundraising for a building that will be there at some stage. We don't know when yet, uh, but we're fundraising for now. I'm not going to get involved in that because it might never happen. And what happens if it doesn't happen, do we give it money back or what goes on? So do post campaigns. Um, that'd be like, say, like in your, in your, your local shop, your local takeaway, local pub, um, because if people see it, it's very visual. And like not everyone's on, on social media either. Billboard campaigns work really, really well, okay? You see a lot of clubs doing this. 
So we 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 did some work with the, the Green CBS in Tralee um, a few years back when they were doing their astro astro turf pitch across the road from from the the Rose Hotel um, in front of the, the the new school next to the green. So I, I went to the green. So I was in, I just just kind of worked with them just kind of a, as a as a favor really. But um, they were they were they kept talking about this astro turf pitch that that I I knew what it looked like because I saw the design of it. Um, but no one else knew what it looked like. So they were doing they were doing a, a fundraiser. Um, it was a cube fundraiser, so a cube event. Um, and they raised an awful lot of money in the end. But what they did was they they got our, our architect um, at the time, the, the architect the technician that we were using at the time, he did a 3D uh, render of what the pitch would look like when it was completed, right? And we put that on, it was like an eight foot by four foot board billboard and we put that at the entrance to the school there just at the at the, the junction there of the rose hotel the fbd building and the school and um, so everyone that was driving by could see you know this this big sign and and you know the pitch as a part of as, as what it looks like now today so they could see what it would look like but what they found was a lot of people like myself who went to school in the green remember the days of playing in the in the in the, the gravel and the you know the 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 the, the stone or maybe in the green and on a during the summer or in the old acre that was there years and years ago and they thought geez like we great to read that when we were going to school and of course a lot of men like you know like us myself and Tralee would have had their brothers have gone to school there their fathers have gone to school there so there was that emotional tie but they could see it. So there was no need for them to say, but we're doing a fundraiser on the papers. People driving by could see this is what they're raising money for and they want to get behind us. So we do that. We do the same thing with a lot of groups we work with now. They put up the billboard of what the pots, what it's going to look like, an artist's impression of what it's going to look like after it's done. And you're asking people then to help us build this. So they can see, look inside the, the gate and see a field with nothing there. And they'll say, okay, let's help us build this now in, 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 two, in, in two years' time or one year's time, whatever it might be. So just make sure that you're, you're giving people something tangible to actually uh, raise money for, because if they can't see it, they won't trust you. They'll never be there. Use influencers. So again, sports people, um, like it's obviously the lads, the carry team players get involved in a lot of these things because they just got so many followers and they, people know them. Um, they're they're you know, sometimes a good face to have behind these things. Sports people, artists, actors, business people, models, anything like that, you know, that, that would have... That people would know, would trust, would but the main thing that would have a huge amount of followers online, um, people follow them on social media. And like if they're local, and, we, and we're looking in Kerry with a lot of kind of famous people living in the county, just ask them to do us a favor, you know, say, look, you know, would you mind putting your name behind this? Would you mind just doing a kind of a post on social media? Uh, would you mind doing a post on Instagram, you know, a TikTok post, whatever? Um, you know, in some cases, would you be the, you know, would you be the ambassador for it? Would you be the actual brand ambassador for our, our charity here? Uh, would you kind of be the face of us and you know that'd be for larger ones as well but like it does really really work you know um as i said try to avoid politicians because just be they be split down the middle in terms of like you know i don't like that person's politics i'm not going to get involved uh you know so don't you know i you can want to i i try and steer away, away from it but again use who people you know use people you know um to influence the, to influence the fundraiser as well get them to put up their their facebook page social media pages whatever it might be have a hook, uh, make it fun, make it insane, make it edgy, but not, not controversial. So it's like dodgy. Um, but like, you know, have something that's a bit, bit, bit of fun, bit of crack. Like most fundraisers that involve a bit of fun or family events or, or sports or something like that, uh, that aren't taking themselves too seriously, they're, they're way better than, than something that's, you know, that's, you know, just, you know, just kind of asking to, you know, can you just drop in money there, collect money, or you're, you're shaking a bucket or something outside the, outside the gate of a church. Get something that the, the community can get involved in. Um, again, we, we were involved in a in a, in a project above in Colla Hill in County Leash, and they um they they um organised an event. Um, it was the Irish uh, the Irish All Ireland sorry the All Ireland um, porridge making competition right, <laughs> which was which is actually a thing, and they, they were going to find the winner the All Ireland winner. That would represent Ireland in the Scottish, which was the international porridge making competition every year. So there is an actual porridge making competition, uh, which I wasn't aware of at the time, but there is anyway. So they created this festival over the whole weekend uh, to raise money for their community centre. So they ran this porridge festival. I can't, remember, can't think of the name or no, but it wasn't called a porridge festival, but it was called something else. Um, but they did a gazebo or a tent there, they had music, they had face painting, they had food trucks. And like Cullhill is, is on the old Dublin to, to um, Cork Road, just outside um, Doro. So it's a small, it's not, you know, it's a very, very small space, place. But they raised some like 40 grand. 
this weekend uh, for, for their, their, their community centre. And now it's become, well, it's to stop because of COVID, but they're going back next year again now um, to get it going again. But it become an annual, because it's going to become an annual event. But it got loads of traction because it was just kind of quirky and a bit kind of different. Um, and a lot of people were talking about it. And people were just going along to see what this is all about. Um, and now, of course, then next year they'll come back and it's been more. So very small village, raised a good bit of money for a very good project in terms of a community centre, but just finding something that could be a hook that'd be a bit different than something else. Use visuals. So again, as I said, use your photos, videos, all this kind of stuff, right? Um, so the key thing with the campaign, it needs to be um, very simple. Um, a lot of fundraising, you're always asking the question, what are they raising money for? You know, they're doing a fundraiser, but what is it they're actually raising money for, okay? Um, and that, that happens a lot, say, with, with clubs. So if a club is doing a fundraiser and just down as, you know, a fundraiser for the club, we don't know if it's that, is that to buy jerseys? Is it to, you know, re redrain the pitch? Is it to buy floodlights? Is it to pay for coaching fees and to pay for senior team travel and all this kind of stuff? We don't know what it's for. So always be very clear in terms of what the money is going to be used for, okay? If it's just a generic kind of pot of funds that you're trying to get, into your organization to keep the show on the road. Even with that was the case, I, I would put in, you know, the money you will, will donate today will help us keep the lights on, get our insurance paid, um, get our, 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 our car park maintained, um, would provide us with, you know, for um, better heating, whatever it might be. Just give, make a list of everything that's going on with all of the organization every month in terms of overheads. And that the money that don't, don't, they're donating is going towards that cost. If it's for a specific project, state what that project is for. So you might be trying to collect money to buy laptops for kids in the school. Okay. So say, look, you know, help us, you know, get our kids online or buy, buy laptops for the, for the school. Um, it's because very, very clear in terms of what you're looking for. So people sometimes will think, and you know, it's just human nature. I wonder where's that money going to know? Is that going to salaries? And is that going to pay the manager's fees? And is that going to pay accountants or the consultant fellow there, Tom O'Leary? Is that going to pay his fees? And this kind of you know, stuff happens. So be very clear where the money's going to and be very clear in state where the money's going to. Really important. Make sure they know how they can donate. Okay, sounds simple, but again, people forget to say how they can donate. And you're kind of going, okay, well, where, where can I donate here? You have to see those billboards on the side of the street um you know like for uh, win, a, win a house in killarney and all these or win a bmw 3 series and you think that's fantastic it's amazing but it's not very clear on the on their on their ads where you can actually go to donate now obviously you, you google it and you can go online but if you take, if you take the one in Clarny or the one in the house in Clarny that you're doing at the moment if you googled win a house in killarney you're more than likely gonna be directed to um there's a school in somewhere in cork i can't think of where now that's also doing a, a fundraiser to win a house in Killarney as well. Okay. So you, the first one that comes up when you, when you actually go into it, and some people, I, I guarantee this, but people will go into the wrong one and actually donate to the school <laughs> instead of, it's going to be bored waiting, it, the, into the school, it's supposed to, to, the, to the carry GA because they're doing the exact same fundraiser at the exact same time, but they don't make it very clear in terms of where you go to actually donate. Um, and then the key thing is what would the impact be, all right? And that's why the visuals work really, really well because people say, wow, that's going to be class when it's finished. Okay, that's the impact, right? Because even though they're not physically walking on the ground or not physically going into the building, but they can see what it's going to look like when it's completed. So I'll show an example of that in a second. I'll just give an idea of what I'm talking about. Um, okay, so this one called in terms of in terms of images. Now, this is me doing a very, very simple uh, billboard for the, for the purpose of this workshop, okay? So there's no huge design element here, but it's very, very clear in terms of what this, this group are doing, right? So and this is a made-up group. It's not, it's, not a, it's not an actual project I'm working on. Um, help us build our playground. That's very, very clear. That's an image of what the playgrounds will look like in the little park in the village, right? So there's no kind of ambiguity here at all. Help us build our playground. Go to w.villageplayground.com for details. So they can go to the, the playground.com site to donate. Or they can text donate to 54678 to donate now or donate on our Facebook page. Then on the on the left is the target of 50,000 euros and the thermometer, which is a lot of you see these a lot of places, you know, where people say, okay, we're nearly at our target. To help us get over the last last 20,000 euros or last 10%, whatever it might be. But this is very, very clear. You're asking them to help us build this, and we're we're nearly halfway there. Okay. So there's a bit of a kind of a, a, a motivator there for people, right? If that was a sign. 
on an A4 piece of paper on the shop saying, you know, the, the, the blah, 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 community council are raising money for the local playground. Uh, please get involved and, and donate to, you know, would I get excited about that? No, I wouldn't. Would I see what's involved in it? Where is the playground? What's going to look like? No, I wouldn't. If I'm a parent, I want to know what's going to, what I'm actually going to be getting from my kids. Um, I want to see what it's going to look like, okay? Now, if I'm taking a step further, when I would go on to the villageplayground.com, I'd actually have a, vi a visual walkthrough, video walkthrough, what the playground will look like when it's completed. And that would be the motivating factor then for parents to actually put their hands in the pocket and actually make this reality for their kids. Um, if, I, if I wasn't a parent, would I get involved in it? No, I wouldn't, because it's not, it's not a benefit to me. So again, you're, you're, you're picking and choosing who you're going after in terms of the first people you're going after to get, to get the money off of. It's people are directly related or benefiting from the actual thing you're doing. If they're not benefiting from it, why would they bother getting involved? Um, target the diaspora. Um, again, you know, it says one of the main things about the online campaigns. Uh, people anywhere can donate. Um, talk to people that are that are abroad, that are still linked to your community. The great thing about social media now is, you know, when I went to the States, you know, back in 94, um, no mobiles, you know, you, you, your, your, your pay, your pay phone, you're ringing home, you know, once a week to make sure you're still alive and you know, you're, you're, you're doing great and <laughs> whatever. Um, no, it's like, it's instant. Like you're, you can be, you can be on to your family 24 seven via zoom or Skype or FaceTime, or whatever. Right. No one's tapped into that on the fundraising side of it. Okay. They've forgotten about the fact that, you know, just because they're not living in our, on our doorstep or living in our community, we've gotten about them completely. They're literally, they've got 24 seven access to you via social media. Okay. Use that when you're out there fundraising, you know, tap into it and say to them, and don't be afraid to say it, like say if you've got a, got a, 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 a person, you know, a neighbor, son, nephew, whatever, living abroad, or daughter living abroad, and they're working or they're involved in GA club or they're involved in a soccer club or they're involved in work, get them to ask their, their, their American buddies that they're, they're hanging around with, they can always get involved, you know, because they will. They'll ask their friends, like, you know, we're doing this fundraiser for a team back home, you know, get involved. It's not, and once it's not like massive money, they'll probably donate something towards us. So use that linkage, use that, use that, use that as a way of getting their money. Um, encourage them to promote the campaign amongst their network. Well, this, is what, this is what the GA were very, very successful at doing, right? The GA, what they did was they, they targeted a number of successful companies in, in the States and in the UK, and they used those companies then to promote the campaign within 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 those locations so for for example you had a company ringing say their suppliers who they're giving loads of money to every year for 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 supplies and they said look we're we're doing this camp we're involved in this campaign we're raising money for for um for a project you know it's a very very important project back where i'm from um you're one of our main one of, main, one of our main suppliers we give you millions of euros every year we signed you up for a thousand euros uh table at the dinner dance and they're kind of going to use the rebound to this, but I have no option by you. So that's how they did it. They, they used the, 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 the hub and spoke. So the hub were the key people that were well connected in, in the States and in the UK. And they, they were the hub. And then they used their networks to bring the money back in. Okay, that's how, that's how they were so successful at it. But what they were also successful doing was they, they ran a campaign and were involved in a marketing campaign with them. They, they wanted to kind of encourage people to put a hand in their pocket and donate to the Center of Excellence. So the campaign we came up with was that at that time, the minor team hadn't won in years, um, and you know it was it was it was kind of barren territory for for for, for, for the county in terms of winning competitions. And we were kind of saying, look, we're, we showed a map of Ireland, we showed all the centre of excellence that were being developed in Ireland, and the one that was standing out was Kerry had none, and it actually made people angry <laughs> in these places because they're like, well, how can we have none? We're like, you know, we we're supposed to be the kingpins, and that's what we used to make them angry so that they would actually donate. Now, someone's kind of corny, and someone's kind of be kind of waffly, it, it bloody well worked, really, really worked. And we used video campaigns and we used testimonials and we used, you know, um, you know, ex-players to kind of drive that home to them when they were over there, that look, this is something you need to get, get behind. And they raised well over a million dollars, like, you know, it was, it was amazing. Um, but you can only do that once because you can't go back, keep on back every single year because you can't raise that sort of money every year. It has to be done right first time. And that's really important. But the key thing the message I'm going to cross here is that they use the network. They didn't cold call. They didn't go over there. A bunch of Irish that's in arriving in New York with a, with a campaign that didn't know, didn't know anyone. They used the networks already built over there. Not not so they weren't ones pushing us. It was people in 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 the states and in the UK that were pushing us. Do things like like and share campaigns. 
young, young, young people, young professionals, they spend their life on social media, right? Um, everything's liked and shared. Everything's liked and shared, right? Everything goes through that network and channels. If it's something that they can grasp onto and it's something quirky, clever, um, and it's not that expensive to get involved in, they, they, will, they will get involved in us. But you have to work the, the networks like that, okay? And though it sounds like an awful lot of hard work, an awful lot of time and effort, trust me, the amount of time and effort in this, even though it sounds like an awful lot of work, but I'm saying tonight, it's a fraction of the amount of time you'd be out there on the street, collecting money, selling tickets, door to door, getting abuse, getting wet, getting cold. Um, this is done right once, you start building up a system, you start building up those networks, it starts coming in the whole time. So just, just think about that in terms of, yes, it might be a bit different, might sound complicated, might, might sound like a lot of hard work, it's not as much work as, as, as the traditional fundraising. Um, I'm not saying give up your traditional fundraising because that's important to get your get the fees on the ground, go out there, promote what you're doing, let people know you're there still, and use this kind of a kind of a promotion campaign. But certainly, in terms of raising money, online will raise you more money. Target companies again. Um, most companies are all companies online. Give them an opportunity to donate again if they can. They if they can get brand opportunities on your website. If there's no one going to your website, no one on your social media, they won't go near you because they'll get no exposure. They want the exposure. Some companies don't want any exposure. They want to keep their donation quite uh, confidential. That's fine. Most other companies want some sort of marketing, um, some sort of kind of a, a brand awareness out of us, okay? That's why you would pick companies that will, will get that awareness. So if you're running an academy, whether it be GA Academy or Soccer Academy, you're gonna go after companies that are targeting kids um the likes of say the palladium for example your cinema bowling bodies um mcdonald's you don't want to be you know, <laughs> you know what i mean it's kind of point to making you know there's no point like for example i i've got i've got a i've got an advertising uh boarding in the um on the on the fence in the green school <clears throat> for for business consultancy marketing i've never got a phone call from it i never will get a phone call from it the reason i have it there is because they put up there because I did work from on a voluntary basis and they said they threw up a sign for me. I said, fantastic. Like what fifth year, third year, sixth year is going to say, Jesus, Tom O'Leary, yeah, I'll give him a call there and all because I'll do some marketing or, you know, it's the wrong place for me to be advertising because I'll get no business out of it. The point I'm making is that you, you want to go after companies that will feel they're getting exposure for their brand because they're, they're, they're promoting their brand in front of their potential customers. And that's really important. Um, so sponsor logos can be on the homepage of your site. You can offer different different payments or different uh, pricing structures for different pages. So if your homepage is the bit most visited, um, they get they they pay more for that. If you've got a club and the results page is the most visited, you get they pay more for that because that's what people are on. Um, again, you can do photo shoots of them handing over the check. You know, do launch campaigns or sponsor campaigns, all this kind of stuff. All that can be done online, um, as well as as well as you know, obviously through the, the regular press, whatever as well. Um, okay, I'm just going to show you some. Um, sorry, that's the tax refund donations that I mentioned earlier on. Uh, this is something that you should all be looking at, um, and it's it's not it's both for your online donations, but also for any donations you're getting from, from, from pay while you workers. So if you guys, if you go to pay, pay while you worker and you ask for 250 euros, now that's a lot of money. So what we would normally do is we do, we do a direct debit campaign where they give uh, 250 euros divided by 12, I think it's 21 euros, I think it is. Um, sorry, 20, yeah, 21 euros roughly per month. So round up and say 22 euros a month um, by direct debit. That works all at 250 euros for the year. At the end of the year, then they fill in a form, uh, the revenue form. You submit that form to revenue. You claim back the tax. There's a 30 percent of what the tax rate is on this that they they give you back. So if it's 30 percent, um, is by by sorry, uh, yeah, I think it works out about yeah, it works out some like roughly some like hundred something twenty euros more or something like that. Um, but the key thing here is that if you are an organization that is borrowing money uh, to get your know, matching funds, so you need, you need you know, matching funds by way of loan, a bridging loan to get the project off the ground, you might be using some sort of term loan or mortgage towards the cost of, say, a large-scale capital project, which a lot of organizations would have to do because you never get 100% finance. And you're thinking, okay, how am I going to meet the repayments? Say 20 grand a year might be the repayments of the loan. How am I going to do that? 
the way we work that is you basically again look at your your your, your tax refund donations, right? So if you're targeting, let's say, you know, 100 people, right, that are going to give you um, 250 euros um, in the year, you're looking at again that's your 25 grand. So let's say your your loan payments are 20,000 a year. You're targeting 100 people to give you 22 euros per month every month. Right, that works out twenty five thousand euros directly from them. Plus, you're getting the tax they paid on that twenty five thousand euros as well back from revenue. Okay, so now you're actually you can actually start drawing or paying down your loan quicker because you're putting it all in towards it. Or you could take the the reserve from that fundraiser and put it into back into the club or whatever it might be or the organization. Okay, but everyone thinks how am I going to get two hundred fifty euros from the pay where you work for a lot of money? Twenty two euros a month isn't isn't enough. It is a lot of money for some, but it's not it's not a massive amount of money. If you get say ten people in your committee. They've got to find 10 people each to get 22 euros a month. That's your sorted in terms of your loan repayments for that year. Now, what you're going to get to do is that they that they you know they could cancel their their their, their direct debits at any time they want to, or they could cancel at the year end. Um, but you're hoping because it's 22 euros, you try and time in, say, for a two-year deal. And then at the end of two years, you go back then to get another 100 people to do the same thing, right? So it's a very good way of, of, of generating revenue to clear a debt. Um, because people can see, well, fair play to them, they built this thing and they have a loan on it, um, and we're going to help them pay off this loan. But you do it through direct debit because the bank, the, the bank payment to the loan on the loan goes out every month. Okay, so let's say you got two grand going out every month, but you got two and a half thousand euros coming in every month from your from your donors on the direct debit scheme or standing order scheme. Your bank is happy because everything's it's been cleared every month, and you're actually it, it making more money because you're getting the tax relief back on it again. So something to look at. It's it's on the revenue.ie website. There is some rules and regulations around it. A lot of clubs do it. A lot of churches do it as well. Schools do it uh, to um, and you just basically apply to be, become a, a um, an approved body under the the tax relief and donation scheme. So something very very much worthwhile looking at. A lot of people don't look at it for some reason. Um, Okay, so I'm just going to show you um, the, the the point I was making there around um, visuals. Okay, so this is the thing I was going to talk about the St. Prince Park of Sea. This is an example of one because um, the most the one we're doing at the moment. Um, give me two seconds here, so I'll give you a new share. Okay, can you? Uh, where is it? Sorry, can you all see that? Yes, thanks, Sam. Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so that's just an example of, 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 of one project, I'd say, right? So the reason why I showed you that is that when we when we were set off first going out to people saying we're, we're raising money to build a full-size astro, astro truck pitch, they were saying, what would that look like? How big is it? Where is it going to go on the grounds? Is it going to be in the same place? We all this kind of stuff. And mm. we were kind of getting hard to get people kind of buy into it. And then when we showed them that they could see, and this is parents. So parents were saying, were thinking about their kids playing there on a Saturday morning in the state-of-the-art facilities, as opposed to in, you know, 
in muck and grass and whatever. Um, so we were saying to the parents that we're, we're, we're renting places all over the place because we just only kids playing in the academy, that we we know not enough space from them. The weather being so bad and the games being cancelled and training being cancelled, parents are getting kind of annoyed about this. So we were saying, can you imagine when this is up and running, with a full-size pitch, the, the entire academy can play on, on all weather, proper surface dugouts, proper floodlights and the whole lot. And parents are like, this would be amazing, be fantastic for, my, for our kids. And all we're looking for do is basically they have to pay 25 euros for a ticket that they can win uh, a trip to Disneyland is what the prize is. Um, but it's that visual. So when we send out the, the WhatsApp about the, the raffle, we put that link to that video so they can see the video and they can see what it's like. So I did this to my, I, I sent out to my WhatsApp group, my, my friends group and other, my, my nephews and, and, and my, my, my family. And the amount of people who came back said, that's class because they, they, they would have played with the park years ago. I said, geez, back in our day, if we had that, it'd be great, you know. And we, we I think they'd be great. They just that one, one WhatsApp message brought in like 400 euros in terms of ticket sales. And that was just one person. That was me not pushing it, you know. So that's the power of it because you could see. Whereas if I send that out, they, they wouldn't be really interested. But if I, so I, I send the link to see what it was about, what, was, what we were going to doing, they actually didn't, they got involved in it. So and like that, that doesn't have to cost an awful lot of money. And that's where you can get your support locally. So like that was that was done by by um by a volunteer so it was done it was done for 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 nothing and i'm doing the work on their 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 grant applications for nothing as well because i'm involved in the club so you can like you can get a lot of this thing done for free on a voluntary capacity so um you know use it like any any designer graphic designer architect will be able to put that together relatively straightforward for you um and they might look for money for it or they might look for you know reduction in the fees for whatever it might be so the audience to talk about tonight don't have to spend cost an awful lot of money um, a lot of we done DIY yourselves. Um, you can learn how to do it. You get advice how to do it. Um, if you're trying to come up with campaigns and ideas, just Google it. Look at like you know best fundraiser ideas, you know top fundraising ideas, creative ideas, whatever it might be. And I'm okay, not saying copy them for every element of it, but just you know take the ones that work well and 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 run with it. If you're doing a say a campaign where you've got a, a, a professional fundraiser doing the event for you, like so like those. That that one is a, is a company doing organizing the 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 um the the, the, the prize. I think Saint Simmons in in, in the stole are are are, in, are doing um the uh, the ten ten years in poker deal on the ten years to tickets. Um, again, this company doing that for managing that for them. Um, but they don't only build the platform; they don't only do kind of the event side of it. You still need to go out there and promote it through your social media channels. So the key thing with with the online fundraising is that you're using the network that's out there online. To get as man, get to as many people as possible, so as much money comes in as possible. Okay, so the key message I want to get across to you tonight is that picture someone standing at the checkout in whatever supermarket it is, right? Not going to Tesco or whatever. Okay, and they're there packing bags, packing bags. And we've all been there, but the choice is on and rotating. And you know, next group comes in, they do the same thing. And all you're doing is you're you're you're, you're capturing the people that are shopping in that supermarket on that day, and only a percentage of those people will actually give you anything. Right, someone will give you something because they want they want to give it a change, or because they know you, or they feel sorry for you. Others will will say probably give out because they're in a rival club or something, right? And they won't give you anything, but you only get a percentage of it. Can you imagine if you were doing had a fundraiser online where there was a bit of traction there, there was been networking, a bit of social media, and it was ongoing. The difference in terms of what you bring in for a fraction amount of work involved in it, okay? You know, but you have to work on it. Um, and it's like everything else you do right the first time and you get the platforms and systems going, you know, this can be this can be an ongoing revenue stream for you, you know. Um, it's like we, we we worked with a lot of companies, commercial businesses who who when COVID came in, they they shut down, the retail premises were, were shut down, um, they couldn't operate anymore, and they went online. And it was a disaster for them at the time. But now it's fantastic because now they've another revenue stream coming in because now it's selling online as well as being opened again. Okay, take my own business. You know, two years ago, I'd be standing in front of you in a hotel somewhere or in a hall somewhere talking to you, right? Um, the very fact I could bring my business online brought in other revenue streams for me in terms of training and consultancy because I wasn't limited to where I was based. Be like the guy collecting inside and done stores, not limited to one location. Now you could go everywhere. So you could, you could, you know, I'm delivering Zoom training to people in leash at the moment. I'm not driving there. So think about the same way from your perspective, how you can take that model and bring your fundraising online, the amount of people you can target that aren't actually in your location or locality, and that can give you money, but not just on a one-off basis, but on an ongoing basis.
Okay, that's really, really important because you can, they can, they can, you can have this platform and you can do different events throughout the year through this, through this platform, through your social media, through your, through your website, whatever it might be. Look at the online donation, sorry, the, um, the direct debit schemes I talked about there as well, where you've got regular income coming in, because that's really important because you want to be kind of doing a fundraiser, getting in a couple of grand, you clear a debt, then you back out fundraising again, you clear another debt, back out fundraising again, clear another debt. That's that's soul destroying. That needs to burn out as well with volunteers. Whereas if you can get in, people set up the direct debits or three year sponsorship deals, things like that, you don't have to worry about it in the next three years and you can start building up for that. Okay. But a lot of but a lot of organizations do, and you might be doing the same thing, is where it's like the tide coming in, tide going out. So tide's coming in, which is the debt, and you, you clear it in with fundraiser, it goes back out again, but then it comes back in again. You're always fighting it. Whereas you've got regular income coming in, you, you, you know, that money's coming in through various different sources. Um, it just makes life an awful lot easier for you. What I would suggest is all of this evening or after this evening is if there's any web designer, social media, marketing consultant in your, local, in your, in your group that you know of, that's related to you, that's in your town or village that you know, ask them for advice, first of all which is, you're not asking me any work, just literally some advice, come to your meeting, whatever it might be. There's a lot of, of, of training um, done through the local enterprise office, primarily on digital marketing courses. There's a ton of stuff online on, on digital marketing and how to do Facebook campaigns and all that kind of stuff as well, that you don't have to be known spending loads of money for people to do this for you. You can do it yourselves. The thing is, if you learn how to do it yourselves, it means you can do it yourselves always. You don't have to worry about getting other people to do it. What I, I would suggest as well is if you can get a few people locally, uh, primarily younger, younger people who are kind of into social media and understand it and they're online the whole time, get them involved in your committee. So like have maybe a, a social media or um, a digital marketing committee established within your organizations because they can then look after this and they'll be able to do it relatively straightforward enough. Um, if it's a group that are kind of not IT savvy or not really into technology, I just know that they, they won't progress with us and it'll be just, it won't be done and you'll miss an opportunity because trust me, it's, it's, it's wide open and no one's doing it. Very, very few people are doing it. You know, um, everyone's doing the same old, same old. And this is a gap in the market where, you know, small organizations need to start going online with the fundraising because you can generate money out of it. Um, and it's the way forward. So again, in terms of the, um, so that yeah, basically, again, as I said, it's not rocket science, a lot of us. It sounds probably more complicated than what it is, uh, but look at it and see, and just give it a go. You know, if it doesn't work first time, try and just try it and keep trying it again because it is something you need to look at doing. Have you any questions on that or is it, does that make sense to you or, or, um, or any of you actually doing any online fundraising? No. Thanks, Tom. It was very clear and it actually gives an awful lot of food for thought as well about adapting and, you, you know, using different methods as well and, and kind of maybe being a bit smarter about it. Yeah, that's, that's the key word, smarter. You know, work smarter, not harder. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. And just to remind people as well, I just popped it into the chat box that next week uh, on the 1st and the 8th of March, we're going to have using online technologies that will be at 10 to 12 in the day. And then on the 14th and the 23rd, we're going to have webinar and Zoom meetings. And I know we're going into a different phase now, but I still think there is going to be huge benefit, like you were saying, Tom, in having Zoom meetings, because if, if we were having all this training in a hotel room, the chances of we've had people from Valencia Island all the way up to Tarbert at a Zoom meeting, and it would be hard to have that interaction, you know, in a hotel room. So there are benefits for sure, but it's just to kind of have more knowledge about it because I suppose the more we use it, the better we'll get at it. Absolutely, exactly. Yeah, like so with just with that in terms of online technologies, we're looking at like this, you know, we're looking at again your social media platforms, your your um your bookkeeping platforms as well. So it's kind of like how you can use technology to make your make your make your organization more efficient. Uh, make it more productive and kind of streamline streamline a lot of things as well because there's an awful lot of stuff out there that, that we're just not aware of we're not using um, it's like your phone most people use for phone calls and text messaging but it does like a million more things that we're not aware of um, and the same with Zoom so with Zoom and the webinar as well as just um, how to just host best better meetings 
and use it use more effectively and efficiently as well. Yeah, no, d- definitely. And just to let everybody know as well that we have recorded the session and in the next few days, we'll have it up on the YouTube channel mm-hmm. and then we'll have the, the notes emailed out to you all then as well. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Very stuff. Thank you. We'll see you hopefully next week, Albie, or something. Caroline, yeah. sorry, can I just ask yeah. you just the um, online technologies training you were saying, is that a two day or is it the same one that's repeated? Like it- same one it's repeated. the same one repeated. Oh, perfect. Yeah. That's is. great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. We've yeah. tried to do two of every one that we have yeah. in November just yeah. to give people a different days that might suit Brilliant. or whatever. Yes. Thank you. Thanks a million. Oh, That's well. You're welcome. Yeah. Oh, if yeah. we're ready now, we're actually okay. in on time. I'd say it's the first one <laughs> that we've been on time. Yeah. So thank yeah. you all so much for attending. And like that, I hope you've gotten a lot of food for thought. You'll have the, the notes and the slides that Tom gave, which are always so clear to follow as well. And thank you for that. And then we'll have the recordings up uh, so you'll be able to use them hand in hand with each other. So thank you all for attending. And Bye, thank you. Take care. Bye, everyone. Take care. Bye, thank bye, thanks, bye. Sam. Take care. Thanks, Caroline. Thank you. See you. Bye. bye. Thanks a million, guys. You're welcome. Thanks.